I'm often told there are three types of gamers. The first, who never complain about anything and think everything is brilliant. The second, who complain about everything and hate just about every game out there except for s like a select number of games. And then a third group who, while selective and critical of things, who can also look past the surface of certain games. A surface that may not appear to be so shiny and brilliant as other games. And those, that group of people rather, seem to be able to channel something else that most gamers can't. They seem to be able to find games that people just kind of toss out and don't look at much or really review badly, and in this case that's a perfect example here. But they look at these games and they go, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't looked at in the right light. Perhaps the professionals didn't try hard enough. Or maybe everybody's just biased motherfuckers and I should be different. Whatever the case is, when I first fired up Vampire Reign, I didn't like it. I was agreeing 100% with the reviewers. But as I played it, I began to discover that there was a lot more here than meets the eye, and I know that's the most corny Transformers reference of all time, but it's the absolute truth in this case. So, let's take a look. Okay, before we even go anywhere, the load times in this game suck. So, if I'm going to agree with anything that anybody's ever said about this game, the load times are absolutely horrible. I mean, I don't want to wait here 40 million years, I want to play the fucking game! Come on, 360, go, move! Load! And you're going to be even more pissed off when you see what it loads. Come on, you slow fuck! Jesus Christ! Thank God Almighty! I'll hold this position and wait for Hanson. All right, you can't tell here, but the visuals are not that bad. These videos really don't do any justice to most of the games I show, and this is one of the worst. This is like one of the worst cases here because you can't see most of anything going on, which is a shame because this game has some of the best rain you'll ever see in a video game. So if there's anything going for this game right off the bat, it's that it's got the best rain effects bar none. Um. What you're immediately going to notice is similarities from this game to Splinter Cell. And you, you're obviously going to draw parallels here. You have to. It's almost impossible not to. It's very similar to Splinter Cell to a certain degree. But it's not a complete rip-off either. And a lot of people are like, oh, this is just Splinter Cell Vampires. It's not just Splinter Cell Vampires. This is as, this is as if um, a horror game had sex with, with basically a covert ops stealth action game. And this is kind of the result. So... While I'm not a, a perfect unison, it created an interesting little offshoot that most aren't going to want to play. Now, what I'm doing here, and I'm sure this is going to annoy the hell out of a lot of people, is I'm showing that this game is actually very linear. You can't just go wherever you want. In fact, what I'm doing now is I'm basically representing what most gamers are going to do. They're going to think they have unlimited freedom. I can go wherever the fuck I damn well please because it's a video game and we're so used to every other game under the sun letting us do whatever we want but at the same time leading us, you know, by the hand. Like babies. This game is not designed for those gamers. This game is designed for one path. You are supposed to go one way. Now, we're going to watch basically as I... Uh, what would be the word? As I basically fuck around and get nowhere. And I could see why, you know, a gamer could get frustrated after five, six minutes of this shit. But it's really very fucking obvious where you're supposed to go. There are many things that gamers don't take into account. First of all, there's a big-ass radar with a glowing thing on it. That's where I'm supposed to be headed, not where I'm going. But the problem is, you could very easily think, oh, well, I'll just go around, and this game does not allow that. Now, I'm sure about 100,000 people just said, well, that's bullshit. I should be able to jump off that rooftop. I should be able to launch some kind of grappling hook and swim across. Well, it's not that kind of game. Truth be told, this is a little limiting. This is a little frustrating in this day and age, but it is not a game killer in any such way. The only person that's going to kill the game for are the morons who think this is how this game is supposed to be played. And as you can see, this is very, very boring. I mean, you could literally fall asleep and there's no music either, so that doesn't help. One thing you could definitely hear, though, is the rain. On a consistent basis, you'll hear thunder, lightning, and the rain falling. And it gets atmospheric at times, but at times it could put you to sleep because that's all you're over here. So here I am doing the same thing all over again, just wandering aimlessly. And I'm going to continue to do this, and this is to prove a point, because I've seen professional reviewers play this game, and this is exactly what they show. The same scenes over and over again, from the same fucking mission, 90% of the time. They're just showing the same crap we've already seen a million times. They don't ever show anything new. Later on, I'm going to show you how action-packed this game really is, or how action-packed it can get, to some degree. But for now, let's just watch how Moron will play Vampire Reign. And yes, I'm playing stupid on purpose. You'll see what I mean in a few moments.
Okay, remember when I said it was so fucking stupid where you're supposed to go? Look down. There's Kelly. Not two feet from where you started. All you gotta do is climb the ladder, go up the building, and drop down the side. She's right there. It's even indicated on the fucking radar. But I noticed something with the reviewers. They don't use their common sense. The people who play this game and bash it don't use any kind of common sense. So now action occurs. Wow, look at that. There's no action in Vampire fucking Rain, right? Bullshit! There's plenty of action, and let me tell you something. It's not a baby game either, because if you even miss once or twice, you are fucked. And it makes perfect sense, because you're fighting... Uh, you're not fighting human beings here. You're fighting fucking Nightwalkers, which are the equivalent of vampires on acid. However, the rain does distill their power slightly, so... You're given some opportunity to survive, but if you fuck up too much, they're gonna murder your ass. So, let's see if I can do this without fucking up. Because sometimes, you know, even I screw up on scenes I've done a couple of times. And I did this plenty of times, believe me. As you can see, I'm missing right here. It's pretty tense stuff, though. That was pretty good. And this is really cool, because if you bl if you blast their heads off, as you can see in this Vampire Vision thing I'm doing here... Alright, now I just fucking missed. Shit! But see, you're not dead. You're not fucked up yet. But see how caution is appearing on the screen? That means that everybody else in the radius just found out. And here he is. I did have time to run, and I did have time to flee, but unfortunately, surviving this part, as I was, is almost impossible. So, you die. And you're gonna die a lot in Vampire Rain. This doesn't ruin the game, this just makes it a hell of a lot more challenging than your average uh, video game. And it expands the uh, time to play by a lot, because once you die, you usually have to start over the entire sequence. But see, it's not punishing me by making me go back through the, the whole fucking part I did in the beginning, like climbing the ladder and shit, and I heard professional reviewers say exactly that. It's gonna penalize you to the point where you're not gonna wanna play it. That's bullshit. You fucked up, go back, try again. This game actually reminds me more of older video games than newer ones. It adheres to old school logic, not this new school, oh, we're gonna start you off five seconds where you just were. Anyway, let's try this again and hope I can manage it. Like I said, it's not that easy to kill these things because they do move around. And I missed again. Fuck! Look, the game is not that hard, but I'm obviously playing like shit right now for God knows what reason. Anyway, I'm most likely gonna die because... As I said, surviving this bit up here, if they get you, it's impossible. It's almost scripted in that sense. Alright, so I died again. Let's, uh, let's move on at this point. I'll show you some more of the sequences that come later on. Alright, now this is just a cool scene that I, I liked from this game. And we're still very early on in the game, believe it or not. We haven't even encountered the first boss yet. But I, I just, I dug this scene because I didn't expect it at all. But it makes sense considering the theme of this specific mission... I seriously thought I was fucked. I thought I was going to have to fight this thing with a pistol. But, uh, thank God, Kelly took care of him. And that's just one of many cutscenes that you'll see throughout this game. Are you okay? But, uh, let's move on to a little bit something else. There's an interesting mechanic in this game where... If you can find the, uh, Prime Walker, or the Prime Vampire, like this person glowing yellow here instead of orange, if you can kill them, you practically kill every vampire in the radius, or area. And this cutscene is really corny, so... Good job, Hanson. Let's fucking skip it. Yeah. Happy to be of service. Fuck you, Hanson, you suck! Uh... Anyway, moving on. Okay, look, the cutscenes aren't brilliant, people. Um... It's not Shakespeare, but it, it's manageable. It has some twists here and there, but they're pretty much predictable. Now, you heard that, right? Take them out? Roger, Captain. That means you're gonna fuck the Nightwalkers up. Now, I'm not going to actually show you this sequence, because I don't want to spoil it for people who want to play this game. But, despite what people claimed about not being able to kill vampires, that's a load of bullshit in the finest, because you actually will hunt these fuckers down later on. But in the beginning, you're told not to engage the Nightwalkers. In big, bold, red fucking letters, do not engage the Nightwalkers. What do you think that means? That means you don't fucking engage the Nightwalkers. Okay, let's move on to the club, one of my favorite sequences in this game. Actually, let's not move on just yet. I want to show people some more action from this game. Now, of course, yeah, I know I'm sniping. I know this isn't exact, you know, balls to the wall, John Woo guns ablaze. And they didn't say this was going to be stranglehold people. They said this was going to be, like, tactical action. Note, she just kind of noticed things. But what I'm trying to show you here is they cannot just instantly spot you. IGN, Game Trails, everyone has said they could spot you by a 40-mile radius. They have inhuman senses. Blah, blah, fucking blah. It's all a load of cock and fucking bull. Because really... See how he's standing there kind of watching? But, uh, he ain't watching anymore because I blew his fucking head off. That's right. I'm sending you updated coordinates. Basically, throughout this mission, you're sent coordinates and you basically hunt down... Well, I just said basically too many times. Anyway, 
what you do is you hunt down the various night walkers in the area, and you're doing it by sniper. A lot, most of this game you will spend on the rooftop, so get ready for that. Get ready to explore the rooftops. But here's one of those sequences I really got to show people, and this is why I took on this scene specifically. People have claimed up and down that these things can spot you a mile away. You obviously can see that night walker there, right? And trust me, that's a night walker, and that thing will kill you. However, pay close attention. This is how you play Vampire Fucking Rain. First thing I did, I scanned the immediate area to see if anything was, like, logically visible. Can he actually spot me? His field of vision will actually appear on your radar at points, especially if he's anywhere nearby who he can spot you. Now, I'm not exactly crawling through here, but I'm kind of moving at a nice, decent, slow pace. Anybody who played Splinter Cell knows this pace very well. It's called sneaking up and not fucking getting caught. Or the not getting caught maneuver, as it's been quoted as. Uh, just ignore that. Ignore any like, little twitches and shit I'm doing, because I want to make sure I don't die for this part. But, you know, it's not impossible, as I'm about to show you. I'm just taking my time, trying to see if I can actually sneak past him or not. I, I'm not 100% sure, to be honest with you, but let's find out. Let's see if my... Let's see if there's a method to this madness I've been screaming and yelling about, about how reviewers are full of uh, fucking shit. Now, I'm pretty goddamn close to this thing. Superhuman abilities. Uh oh, it's gonna spot me, right? No, it's not. You see, kids, IGN, game trailers, and everybody else pretty much fucking lie to you flat out. These fucking Nightwalkers are not superhuman. They do not spot you in five seconds. They only spot you if you stand in front of them the entire fucking time. So to all those professional reviewers, I have one word. INCOMPETENCE! They fed you a load of cock and bullshit. Anyone who said this game was bad played it like a fucking retard. The only thing that's bad is minor control faults like what I just experienced there. And that's not enough to sink this game down to a 3.4 or whatever the fuck professionals were giving it. Also, note something. He is the prime of this area. What does that mean? That means I should fucking kill him. But, uh-oh, should I even run the risk? Could he possibly spot me? What do you think? You see up to this point that I can handle myself in this game, and we all know I don't play too many games all that well. So what am I going to do? I'm going to fucking kill him. Now everybody's going, Oh no, Armic, don't do it, you're going to die, because Game Trail is IGN, yeah, GameSpot, and every other review under the sun said this game sucked. Well, I got news for you. There were a few reviewers who gave this game good points. One thing is that aside from some glitches, and I'm going to try to demonstrate that if I can, because if you're too close to a wall, you'll just kind of hit the wall instead of the person you're aiming for. Oh, did we see that? If that wasn't intense, I don't know what was. I killed him in real time as he bum-rushed my ass. Okay, now, let's move on to the fucking club. Oops, sorry, I lied again. Alright, this is after the footage has been shot and after the recording. This is the first time I'm actually doing this where I'm talking after I've done, you know, all the work involved. And I just want to say this. Well, some of these parts may be boring and you may be thinking, oh, well, this looks like a generic action game. It really never claims to be anything but something interesting to play where you hunt down vampires, basically. And it's a covert ops game at the same time. This game is actually a ton of fucking fun to play. It's suspenseful as hell, and you could get lost, and you could navigate around, you know, and you could basically not have a good time, but if you use your brain and think about what's going on, you'll have a blast with this game, and it's plenty action-packed. And as you could just hear, if you caught the, the audio glimp real fast, 